Oh, man, I gotta get going. Where is the driver? I need a driver. Come on. Are you the driver? Of course. Where do you wanna go to? Oh my god. Okay. Let's go see Hong Kong. Absolutely. <laughs> Just get my safety belt on. Alrighty. Why are you in Hong Kong? Well, it's very easy. Here these days is the RISE conference. It's the biggest if you want, digital conference here in Asia. Founded only four years ago. And as digitalization is one of the most important topics for us, that's the place to be. Do you see anything that really excites you there? Well, I walk the stands, a lot of startups. There are very ambitious people, very excited. Not all of them will change the world, uh, but some <laughs> might. Um, and of course, the, the main topic these days is artificial intelligence. Yes. Where will people truly encounter AI? In cars, in their life, wherever? When I look at our company, there's basically no area which would not be affected by AI, whether it's production, where we do predictive maintenance based on data, um, whether it's in R&D, where, of course, we're getting much more powerful tools to develop cars faster, simulate, use the data collection of a huge amount of cars to come up with better solutions. Uh, you go on the sales side where the cars are standing shorter on the lot, mm -hmm. they are better equipped and the customers are more satisfied. But then, of course, when it comes to product, uh, the most ambitious uh, task is to make cars autonomous and this is impossible without artificial intelligence. Why is it impossible? What is AI doing that makes autonomous driving possible? I mean you cannot have an autonomous car which works rule-based. We just say well when there are yellow lines like here that's a pedestrian way so we have to stop and when nobody's crossing the line then after 3.5 seconds you start again. The world is far too <laughs> differentiated to flexible uh, that you could do all of that based on specific rules. So you must uh, develop a car based on AI which is uh, capable of learning itself uh, within certain guidelines, trained by humans, um, exposed to situations where it can learn. Perhaps artificial intelligence is not really the best word, probably machine learning is a better expression. Mm -hmm. Will we have it so that the car will recognize the facial expression and maybe the emotion of another driver? Um, that is certainly a very tough one. First of all, the cars can communicate. They will be With each other. Internet of Things yeah. and they already realize uh, that the next car is preparing for, for launch before you can see it. Mm -hmm. But still in the face you can see the plan, the intention and that <laughs> might be even before the car shows any technical uh, mm -hmm. action. We are certainly making progress on that field mm -hmm. as well to be as good as a as a human being in interpreting faces and what they express. Um, we are quite some way to go but we are moving this direction as well. Okay. Well, what happens when there's snow on the camera? What happens? You know like a real practical thing? Of course all of our cameras are heated and mm -hmm. of course where the situation is such that you need a wiper we have to have a wiper so we have to make sure of course that these cameras work under all conditions clear the first autonomous cars will not be operated in uh, denver uh, in in the middle of winter time <laughs> at night but step by step of course we have to work with all conditions in this perfect world where cars are connected and they're autonomous and they're shared and electric how do you view the design of cities and homes changing? I mean, the most obvious change is that uh, these autonomous cars don't have to hang around and wait for the driver to come back. Uh, they have a higher use rate, and this time they don't stand around anyway. And if they are not needed, they can go places where they don't bother anybody. And therefore, you don't have to look for parking space in the design of a city. A significant change. On top of that, of course, the traffic flow can be much more constant, 
their cars will interact with the infrastructure. They know that the signal will turn red a minute from now and they adjust their speed accordingly. Um, they know where there's a congestion where they better take a way around much better than your navigation system can tell you today. So uh, there are many areas where with a small amount of cars you can transport a higher amount of people with less use of space and time. When our founders invented the car, this was really a revolution and it gave uh, people the freedom of movement. They became independent. Right. Now we're extending that to almost everybody, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in some form or the other disabled, um, or whether even you want to drink alcohol. Um, <laughs> God forbid, yeah. this, this doesn't... Uh, constraint or reduce your mobility by using autonomous cars and therefore this is another step of independence for even more people than cars can give today. So I don't know about you Dieter but let's let's get something to eat. I didn't have breakfast so I'm certainly hungry. I guess we're asking Mercedes where to take us for a good uh, breakfast. I don't need AI for that. I can show you a great place. So we take human intelligence we take and experience. Human intelligence. That's, That's a right. good idea. It's a guy, not AI. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
biggest hurdle we're having is connectivity. I mean, we're talking about the Internet of Things, but this requires an Internet, and these are mobile devices. So we need, we need a network. <laughs> yeah. Go for it and let us connect these vehicles, else we can't use the capabilities of these cars, and therefore that can't be our task. These are very, very smart vehicles. They can talk with each other if somebody puts up a line. Clearly, you're an optimist about the technology, what's going to happen with cars. So, do you see any real limits? Well, hardly any. Our people are so smart and with AI we can accomplish so much. So, hard to imagine a nut they couldn't crack. But, well, here might be one. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Couldn't you tell us a joke? Sorry, my engineers were German. You see? <laughs>